It's December 2021, and with an Omicron surge hitting the UK, travel to Europe is coming to a halt once again. So rather than heading to a Christmas market in Bavaria, I've headed the eight miles to one in the very not German town of Kingston upon Thames. <laughs> Located on the confluence of the Thames and Hogsmill rivers, Kingston can trace its history back to the early 9th century. The name derives from Cygnus Tun, meaning King's Manor or Estate, and belonged to the King in Saxon times. It's believed to therefore be the earliest royal borough. The town lay on the boundary of the ancient kingdoms of Wessex and Mercia until they were unified by King Athelstan to create the Kingdom of England in the 10th century. There is evidence for at least two and possibly up to eight royal coronations taking place in the Chapel of St Mary's, which collapsed in 1730. A large stone recovered from the ruins is, according to tradition, the original coronation stone. Today, that stone sits in the grounds of the Guildhall. The history of Kingston is told in a small museum located in the centre of town, with artefacts from the Roman era through to the modern day. As it was December, the historic marketplace in the centre of Kingston was playing host to a small German Christmas market at the time of visiting. Kingston is a great place to base yourself to explore more of this part of South West London, as just a few miles to the north of the spectacular Royal Botanical Gardens in Kew. The land that Kew Gardens now occupies have been royal land since at least the 14th century, when Edward I moved his court to a manor house in the area. In 1772, the royal estates of Richmond and Kew were merged, and the gardens trace their history back to that date though several of the buildings within the gardens are older, with a great pagoda being built 11 years earlier in 1761. George III enriched the gardens, aided by William Ayton and Sir Joseph Banks. In 1840, the gardens became the National Botanical Gardens, and over the following years, a number of key historic buildings were added, such as the iconic Palm House and the Temperate House. Recent additions to the buildings at Kew include the Princess of Wales Conservatory, which opened in 1987, the Alpine House, which opened in 2006. and the treetop walkway, which opened in 2008, offering views into the trees during the summer months and views across the skyline of London all year round. <music> J 
just two and a half miles to the southwest of Kew, and another grand residence is at Ham House. The original 17th century house was built for Thomas Vavasour, a courtier to Elizabeth and knight marshal to James I in 1610. But it was during the latter part of the century, with the house in the hands of the Duke and Duchess of Lauderdale, that the house was enlarged and embellished, almost doubling in size to create the building that stands today. The house remained in the family until it was donated to the National Trust in 1948, who then opened the house and gardens up to the public. But the granddaddy of historic houses in this part of the world lies three miles southwest of Ham, back past Kingston, and on to Hampton Court. Tudor in the front, Georgian in the rear, Hampton Court Palace was, in its heyday, the most important palace in the country. Whilst multiple monarchs from George II back to William III had an influence on the palace, its most famous resident was the king who had cropped up everywhere I travelled in England in 2021, Henry VIII. He eventually made the palace his principal residence. But the palace didn't start off as a royal project. It was originally started by Thomas Wolsey, the Archbishop of York and Chief Minister to Henry VIII, who took over the site from the Order of St John of Jerusalem in 1514 and started to build a lavish palace for himself. By 1529, Wolsey fell from favour and gave the palace to King Henry to check his disgrace, and within months of getting ownership of the palace, the king went on a building spree. The Great Hall, with its hammer beam roof, was the most important room in the palace, where Henry would feast each night. Beyond the Great Hall are the King's private apartments, including areas where he met his key advisers, and access to a balcony inside the Chapel Royal. power of a great feast that took place in the hall above, the kitchens were equally enormous in scale, taking up a whole block of buildings beside and below the great hall. After Henry, the palace continued to be used by future monarchs, but had fallen out of favour by the time William and Mary ascended to the throne in 1689. By then, the Tudor style was feeling dated, compared to grand palaces such as Versailles. So, the monarchs enlisted Sir Christopher Wren to draw up plans for complete modernisation of the palace, the idea being to replace the Tudor palace a section at a time until it had been transformed into a Baroque palace fitting of the 18th century. With the death of Queen Mary in 1694, William lost interest in the rebuild and work came to a halt, with just half the Tudor Palace being replaced. After William's death, Queen Anne completed the state apartments, but the remaining Tudor Palace wasn't touched. Both George I and George II had some rooms refurbished to meet their tastes, but by now the palace was falling out of favour and George II ended up being the last monarch to reside at the palace.
Although under restoration at the time of visiting, it's clear to see in Fountain Court where the Stuart rebuild came to a grinding halt as the Baroque Palace butts up the original Tudor buildings. If large parts of the original Tudor Palace still remain, the same cannot be said for the gardens, where all traces of the Tudor period was removed. The East Garden runs from the side of the palace and continuing beyond the palace grounds into Holm Park, with long water stretching off into the distance. On the south side, between the palace and the river, is the Privy Garden. Originally William III's private garden, it was restored in the late 1990s to how it would have looked towards the end of the 17th century. Along with Henry's real tennis courts and the 250-year-old Great Vine, which still produces grapes, the most famous part of the wider gardens is the maze, the oldest surviving hedge maids in Britain. Kingston is located on the suburban rail lines out of London Waterloo, with regular trains taking about 30 minutes to make the journey. Several bus routes operate from Kingston direct to the central bus station at London Heathrow, taking between 30 and 75 minutes to make the journey. 